RSA U.S. State Report on Ghana, which reveal human rights abuses and unfair treatment of citizens at the hands of security operatives and the police has raised a lot of concern among security watchers. Professor Kwisienin, Director, Faculty of Academic Affairs and Research at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, has been responding to this particular report. This report to me is rubbish, and I think it should be treated with the contempt that it deserves. I think after almost 62 years of independence, we can write our own report. We have a vibrant civil society. We have a parliament, irrespective of people. It's all weaknesses. That is acting. We have a judiciary that we can criticize. The whole minister has made suggestions about how the judicial decisions can lead to certain problems. We don't need the State Department to tell us what we are doing right and wrong. So I think this is a disgraceful report and we should dismiss it with a contempt that is deserves. And I think after all these years of independence, we should be bold enough to tell them, you know what, this is not right. We have our own capacity to evaluate our problems, our weaknesses, and where we seek to go. It may be slow, but we are getting it right. I am hoping that the foreign ministry will be bold enough to write a robust response to this. Unfortunately, I can tell you point blank that they won't. Because when the embassy wrote about unconfirmed and unsubstantiated reports, that people could be kidnapped and there could be terrorist acts in the north, the foreign ministry was quiet. Well, the report also in part, for example, found serious restrictions on free expression and the work of journalists and also faulted the security services for their handling of some other cases. Dr. Adam Buna, security analyst, also has been reacting to this report. He is insisting it is important government listens to internal stakeholders, their recommendations and engagements to help strengthen Ghana's security sector and improve the country's human rights record. want us to stay away from the fact that uh, the U.S. arrested people from Afghanistan, locked them up in Guantanamo Bay for years without any trial. So the U.S. shouldn't be the one telling us that trial and, you know, unfair arrest and all those things. Yes, I will tell you that we, all of us have had the reason to ask, what do you call it, the national security and the state security agencies. Especially, I think some um, online media personnel were arrested and they were their laptops taken from them, detained, and I think eventually they were released without any charge. And what I gather is the lap is that the laptops are still with them, with the national security or that uh, you know the security agents. We talk about virtually everything that hits the media space or that comes you know uh, in front of us. And so for me, we have a very strong civil society that uh, probably is also acting as a check for the excesses we see in the, gov you know, the, the governance space. So some of us want to see in-house, so in-country, the leadership of this country engaging us that way. The moment they have a, an open door policy, you know, civil society, you, the media, they bring all of us on board and say, this is, tell us when we are going wrong, praise us when we get it right. Roland, you are not going to have the State Department of America telling us things that we already know and things that they themselves are not also doing back home. So, security analyst Dr. Adam Bonad there, we're going to be running through some of the highlights of this particular report with respect to the human rights violations and abuses specifically, and then connect to former Amnesty International uh, country director, Robert Akutuamafo. So we have a conversation on this particular subject. We know that, among other things, the report is raising serious concerns of cruel and inhumane handling and treatment of some citizens at the hands of state officials and other governmental organizations. Let's go on to Zoom now and speak to Robert Akutuamafo. Thank you, Robert, for joining us. So this is a report that is citing Ghana for gross human rights abuses, you know, in the period under review. From where you sit as a former country director, Amnesty International. I'm sure you've been observing the landscape. What do you find?
Thank you. I think that uh, it's important that um, we pay attention to the details of this report. I understand that certain quarters have concerns that America that has issues is raising, uh, is raising these issues. But are those issues true? Are they issues that we need to pay attention to? So for me, um, it's important that we look at the issues that they've raised, look at the things that we need to work on, and not focus on the person giving the message. I think that as far as I've gone through the report, the report gives vivid evidence of what it says. If it gives a particular issue that it raises, it gives us, it gives us uh, evidence of these issues. So for me, I think that as a human rights advocate, I am concerned that we are shifting attention from addressing the issues that are in the report to the person giving the message. Let's look at the message and pay attention to what it's been said in the report. Now let's focus on the message. So how damning is this for a country like Ghana and our international outlook on this human rights front, knowing the details of this report that we know? Over the past um, few years, Ghana has keeps going down in our human rights records. I mean, carefully looking at all the situations that have happened, in, in situations with people um, and the issues that have been raised in the report, and then also looking at issues around our legal and policy and background. The key thing with our legal and policy background is that Ghana has beautiful laws, and we have these laws, but we don't implement them. We do not ensure that they are implemented to the latter to ensure that human rights is protected. How many people are even aware of Chapter 5 of the 1992 Constitution that talks about our basic human rights? So those are the issues that I think are important. It's damning, it's something that is not right. We have had downgrade on various platforms, including the democracy and access to justice issues. So for me, I think that this is worrying and we need to pay attention um, to these issues. I'll have you hold on, Robert. I'll, I'll be back to you shortly. But joining me in studio is Dennis Wedam. He's with the news planning department. Dennis, run us through the exact detail in the minutest forms the infractions when it comes to human rights uh, abuses that this report speaks about or other, you know, infractions? Well, so let's look at what the report says about corruption as a human rights abuse issue. So, for instance, the report raises questions about how Ghana has been able to fight corruption. They make specific reference to the fact that there are laws that are against corruption, but hardly do we see people convicted for corruption-related offences. They cite the instance of the creation of the Office of the Special Prosecutor who they say since he's been in the previous one, since he uh, came into office, he has not been able to, to convict even a single person when it comes to corruption-related issues. They cite the instance of the new one who comes into office and he has only himself and other seconded staff. He does not have people to work with. Now, when it comes to the specifics, they, they make reference to the fact that in 2021, the cost of corruption to the state was up to the tune of 34 million cities. Now, in breaking that figure down, they make reference to a report that they got in which the, the, the Ghanaian consulate, consulate in the Washington, D.C. of the United States um, was not able to account for some $355,000 of visa fees. They also go on to cite an instance where some 3.16 million of fees in a high school uh, funds could not be accounted for or were misspent by the Secretariat. They also cite an instance where the AG report revealed that there's wide corruption in the system and the CDD uh, report also shows that um, the public lack confidence in, that, in, in, in the government's fight against corruption. They go on and on to speak about instances where they felt that the state could have come in with, with, with some measures to fight corruption, but it looks that it's not something that um, is, is working in Ghana. They also go on to speak about issues regarding the Ghana Police Service. They've been heavy on the Ghana Police Service right from their engagement with the public to how they handle crime from point of arrest to detention and all through the criminal justice system. So in specific instances, they mentioned that corruption and uh, brutalities, poor training are some of the causes of this impunity that they're talking about. And that in many instances, the police have often failed to respond to report, uh, reports of abuses. And that, according to them, is because sometimes they don't have the money to even okay. go on to investigate some of those things. Okay. They also cited instances where the IGP and then PIPs that's the Police Professional Standard Bureau, um, have investigated claims of the use of excessive force by some of their members. Okay. So largely, these are some of the things that they've been talking about. In some parts, they also talked about how government has responded to some of these issues and how government engages with some of these reports. And if you don't mind, let me just wrap up with that one. Okay. Um, where government officials, according to the reports, have been very cooperative when it comes to um, 
investigations about human rights abuses and that they've been also they've also been responsive. They also said that the establishment of um, human rights institutions like the Suraj. Suraj have helped largely to settle cases, even though there are questions about um, their, their capacity to investigate highly political uh, and corruption-related cases. There have also been the, the issue of PIPs again and then the IGP having investigated some issues of abuses and then police misconduct. Okay. So there's really a lot in the document. But for now, let's look at what it, it's... This is what it says about the police and then... And corruption generally. Thank you very much, Dennis Wedam. Um, let me just wrap up with you, Mr. Mafu. So now we've seen all of these uh, details that they've uh, revealed in the statement. What recommendations would you make briefly going forward to improve this, you know, index on a global front? One, I think that government should pay attention to the details, as I mentioned before. At least, let's see a convening to discuss this report. For me, I think that when these reports come, it's important that we have civil society, we have the government agencies responsible for human rights to review this report and look at the issues that have been raised and use this as a background to work towards addressing these issues. So for me, I think that it's important that we know the issues, we pick the issues up, civil society, government officials, even the diplomatic missions that raise these issues, including the U.S. State Department, should see how we can discuss these issues and get them resolved so that Ghana would be part of the, uh, the countries that are looking at the human rights issues and addressing them to ensure that we are, we are free and we have justice within our system. Thank you. I'm grateful, Robert Akutuamafo. He is a former country director of Amnesty International. They're speaking to us.